Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I noticed that William Winnett was in the music credits. How did he get involved with the, with the song? Who, I'm sorry? Will, William Winnett, uh, electronic artist. Why he was in the music credits. Oh, uh, the yes. guy who, does, who did sound sound effects. Yeah, yeah sound effects. Sound effects. Sound effects. Sound effects. Queen. Is that what you're talking about? No, it's I think no, no, there's no one in that name. It's, it's not who you think it is. It is. <laughs> Doug, no, Doug, <laughs> Douglas Quinn is, uh, is a, a, a great genius of sound, and he, two or three years prior to my invitation by the National Science Foundation, got a grant or got an invitation to record sounds in Antarctica. And among others, he had very sophisticated, very specialized microphones that he would submerge into the ocean through drilled holes through the ice and he would record the calls of, uh, of seals and orcas. And, and this is the most stunning piece of sound that I've heard in years. And I'm very proud how good my sound, as me as a sound recordist was, but the real best piece of all is Douglas Quinn's. There's no, no other man of... Uh, uh, whom you, you mentioned, Douglas Quinn. They have the Artist in Residence program in, in uh, Antarctica, and he was part of that. And Henry actually is a guitar player, and that's how he first went down to Antarctica. And he's also a professional diver, so he got in with the divers there. And then he's just going every year, and that's how you yeah, basically he was, know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and since I saw Henry's uh, material on the, on the laptop just turning once around very quickly, I, I, I was somehow addicted to Antarctica. And <coughs> I kept talking to Henry and I said, go there, and, and, and somehow I mentioned to him it would be great if I could go there myself and shoot some of the footage underwater. And he said, you won't have a chance at all because and would only allow the most expert of divers because it's dangerous. And in Antarctica, you are, you are not supposed to have any casualties. And there were actually fatalities underwater. And uh, too many resources, uh, helicopter rescue, and, and you just name it, would be engaged by, by an incident like that. So he said, no chance whatsoever. And I kind of resigned, and, and then somehow a few days later he, he mentioned that you could eventually go down. Why don't you apply for an artist and writer's grant mm -hmm. by the National Science Foundation? And I said, I think I have no chance at all because it's all if, if documentary films are being made, they're, they're either scientific. Uh, uh, oriented uh, documentaries or they are the, the normal mainstream sort of thing that you see on television which uh, I can't take any longer. <laughs> and, uh, and I applied, I actually somehow was persuaded to apply and, and I made a, a quite a wild application. <laughs> and in, somehow they, they uh, invited me, how I don't know, Although I was told uh, the scientists were very suspicious about Grizzly Man, okay. would they send down a, a, a German, a Kraut, <laughs> who, would, who would go wild over penguins or whatever? <laughs> yes, I said, if, if there's any penguin at all, I'm gonna go wild. Right. And they still invited me, so I, I was kind of very lucky and blessed to uh, convince them to, to have me down there. Yeah, I think back there there were quite a few. Please, yes. So. Um, a lot of your movies, the fiction and the nonfiction, follow people who go to pretty extreme lengths to get away from what's called like regular human society. Why does that fascinate you, and why do you think that's like an important question to keep asking? You mean uh, doing non-fictional films? No, I mean both your films and all your, a lot of your films are there are characters like in Grizzly Man, Fitzcarraldo. In, uh, in this one, where people have gone to a pretty, look. they've done a lot to try to get away from what we call normal society. And it seems no, but it's the most normal society you find down there. They make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Every single one whom you see on on screen in the film makes a lot of sense, and those are the people with whom I want to be friends. Mm -hmm. the, the the man, for example, the, the journeyman plumber. 
David Pacheco. I want to be friends with him. And, and I became friends with him within five minutes when I talked to him in the, in the cafeteria. And, but he had to go back to his plumbing job uh, very quickly and, and somehow I, I had an, an instinct and instead of shaking his hand and saying goodbye to him, I turned sideways and elbowed him. <laughs> and whenever we met, we would silently elbow each other. <laughs> and that, that was uh, the beginning of our friendship and, and actually I did not see much more of him than these few times elbowing him, offering my elbow, which he accepted. <laughs> and, and then uh, the time I, I met, uh, I spent with him, is the time I spent shooting with him, and that was that. So very often I had, well, for example, the, the scientist who studies the gigantic icebergs. I met him also in the cafeteria, I loved his voice, and he spoke very well and I said, you are a poet, you are not a scientist. <laughs> and he kind of smiled and sat back and then he disappeared to, on, onto an iceberg. <laughs> and I met him again and I said, we have to film with, uh, together and he said, I have no time. In 40 minutes my plane is taking off from the ice runway. And I said, we, we have to give it a try. And he was very nervous. And uh, for the first 10 minutes of the 30 minutes or so that I had with him, I, I had an espresso with him and, and calmed down the noisy, uh, rioting uh, Italian scientist next door to, just to keep quiet for recording. <laughs> and uh, and I, I just said to him, uh, I don't want, I don't want uh, a TV interview with you tell me about the iceberg and tell me about your dreams and don't tell me like a scientist, I know you are a poet. And he looked at me and I said, I, I understood. And then I rolled the camera and that was that. And I did never see anything of him anymore in my whole life. Yeah, so uh, you, you, have to, you have to have it in you to go s somewhere and, and meet some people and and establish an I immediate, instant uh, uh, rapport and a trust. And you have to read uh, the heart of men. If you don't do that, you will never be a filmmaker.